All right, so interview uh, with uh, Mr. Don Curry. So Mr. Don Curry, first, first question, what is your age? <laughs> it's far too large, 79. 79 yes. years young. <laughs> so where were you born? Brandon, Manitoba. Okay. And my wife always gives me a bad time about that because she was born in Saskatchewan. Oh, a bit of, bit of rivalry there? <laughs> yeah, more than a bit. <laughs> and uh, as, a, as a child, what did your parents do for a living? For a living? My, f my father was a salesman uh, in Brandon, Manitoba and for parts of Saskatchewan. And uh, we were, as a family, the three of us were uh, transferred to Edmonton in 1940. And that was when the United States of America was building the Alaska Highway uh, up to, to Alaska and up to help out against the Japanese, I guess. Mm -hmm. uh, and it was quite the city then. And uh, uh, we settled here and I've been here since and it's been a great place to live. Uh, just a great place to live. So. Excellent. Um, did you um, did you have any passions early, early on about um, geology or uh, or any sorts of subjects that you were in further in your career? Uh, the answer to that's yes, and uh, it's uh, thankful that uh, I had a grade eight teacher uh, who uh, took a great interest in the, in the kids, the children that he, that he taught. And uh, one day he came to school with uh, a geological hammer and showed us what it was. And uh, then he said that the following day to bring your dad's hammer and we'll all go down to the river and we'll beat the hell out of the rocks and see what they look like. And from that day forward, I can't thank uh, Mr. Costash enough. That's what got me into thinking about that in science as a general rule. Uh, and uh, I still often think of him. He's long gone, but uh, that's, that's where the interest in things, I guess. A good teacher. A good teacher. A teacher who did also. Yeah. Who, who did, who didn't only teach it in the classroom. Yeah, that's right. Yeah. Yeah. yeah I yeah. also have, uh, most people will have at least one teacher where yeah. and inspire them to to do what they do now. Yeah, right on. Yeah. Yeah, yeah which is what okay. we need. Uh, and as a child, other than, than banging rocks and going to school, <laughs> what did you do for fun or what were your interests? Well, in in uh, oh my God, in uh, in the lower grades, uh, it, we I was at the Mackay Avenue School in Edmonton, which means nothing, I guess, to anybody else that's listening to this, except it had uh, uh, the ash, if you like, or the the the, the uh, material on the where the uh, baseball diamond was was came out of the powerhouse and it was sharp when you slid into any of the <laughs> bases it just about took your knees off or your back end and uh, but nevertheless that's all that was there you know and so we played soccer out there at the right time of the year and we played uh, anything else that was on but baseball was a killer my god you just walked home with blood at night and your parents would <laughs> They'd give you supper fine. after they'd wiped up your knees, you know. Ouch. But we, we uh, I don't know how much you want here, but um, at that school, uh, it and in our area that we lived, and in the rest of Canada, there was 10,000 U.S. Uh, Army people. And uh, they were uh, great citizens when it snowed too much one winter for the four or five uh, graders that the city had, I guess. They came in and they did every every seat and every road in town and pushed it all out of the way. And uh, it was an interesting, interesting place to be. And 
had uh, a great airport, and in the summer times, I'd ride out to the airport. Well, even in the school time, I'd ride my bike out and hang onto the fence at the airport and uh, look at all the airplanes. And there was probably over a thousand airplanes went through Edmonton. Yeah, it must have been uh, quite a few military airplanes too. Yeah, and uh, and anything that I don't know whether you want this piece of history here. But uh, what the Americans did, they built all the, you know, how they did things around the continent sort of thing and put the thing. When the plane was together in any given place, it came to just south of, in the U.S., just south of the Alberta border. And um, they uh, had a, built a huge hangar, and uh, they would run them through and make them okayed for going to Alaska. Okay. And so they'd overfly uh, Calgary and land at the Edmonton Municipal Airport. And some days, uh, Hank, if you remember hanging on the, on the fence looking at them, th there would be over 100 airplanes in there. And there'd be uh, fighters and uh, other bombers and all kinds of stuff. It was just interesting as can be. So hence an interest in the in life very much in airplanes. And um, my grandfather was a huge, huge uh, fan of airplanes. Yeah. 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 Apparently, he could tell you any. Yeah. If there's one in the sky. He can tell you exactly what it is yeah, every that, time. That was the way it would uh, would do. There's other stories I tell you about our neighborhood, but I don't think they're right for here. <laughs> <laughs> Hope that's all right. Oh yeah, yeah. for sure. Yeah. But you'd enjoy it. <laughs> yeah, maybe, maybe after them. Yeah, we could shut it off. <laughs> um, so where did you go to uh, to school? If we um, so you you went to school in Edmonton, as you told me. Yeah. But university. University of Alberta. Okay. In what? In uh, in geology, and uh, so there was Mr. Costash, and uh, and there I was. <laughs> and I uh, got out of University of Alberta and uh, after having various summer jobs, one with a craft cheese company, one unloading trains and all the stuff that you do when you're a growing, growing kid, I guess. Yeah. The, and in those days, you had to have it to do anything anyway because it was, uh, wasn't all that great cash-wise for her family. But... Uh, that that kind of got us through to old enough to go to the University of Alberta and take geology and uh, uh, I don't think I chased girls but I <laughs> I played uh, played basketball for the Bears for a couple of years so and I'd played basketball at uh, Victoria Campus at high school here in town and uh, had a lot of time for bouncing balls and shooting them through the hoop if I was lucky <laughs> and uh, grew up I guess and uh, I had summer jobs with warehousers and other things and uh, I finally got out of the university with a BSc in, uh, in geology and uh, I was very fortunate to get a job with uh, with mobile oil, and uh, I went to Calgary and got trained, I guess, to what to look for in, in drill, drill rigs. And, Big uh, company. Yeah, yeah. and uh, ended up being transferred to, to Regina and sat wells all throughout Saskatchewan, which was pretty busy in, uh, in that at that time. And uh, uh, Met my lovely wife and uh, came out of uh, uh, Regina and Saskatchewan a hell of a lot smarter than I went in. <laughs> Mo mostly because of her. Yeah, and uh, so we, uh, and we were married there in Regina and we had uh, uh, two children, uh, we've now uh, three children. Uh, two boys and a girl, and uh, they grew up a little bit in Regina, and then uh, 
I decided that I'd go back to school and uh, become a teacher. So I went down to uh, to your part of the world. Rare times. Uh, yeah, and St. FX. And uh, I had uh, geolo another geologist from there. Had We ended up being buddy-buddy in, in mobile. And we, we, between the two of us, uh, burned off a lot of tires by going sideways with <laughs> <laughs> on the gravel roads of Saskatchewan, and uh, he uh, he's passed away now, which is too bad, but it was a cl pretty close thing. But so when uh, uh, I got a little older, I thought, well, I went down there for the BSC, like I told you, and I came back, and we came, Ollie and I went to, came back to Edmonton, and, um, so you just went out east for school? Went down east for school, yeah, that's right. And I came back here and got the job with the Edmonton uh, school system. Okay. And I taught, I, I can't remember now, my head's all gone, getting like a lump. But <laughs> nevertheless, uh, stayed teaching uh, in high school. And uh, I, I enjoyed it all right, but... Uh, Oh, I wanted to get on to other things, and so I uh, went back to university and got a master's degree in, in geology and ended up working for mobile and others. And and would you uh, say uh, mobile was your first job? Yeah, it was the first job. First, uh, I guess, yeah, career. First job. career job, yeah. So that got, kind of got missed in what we mixed in what we've been talking about, but nevertheless, that's the way it was. And what did you do for your first job with mobile? Oh, exactly. sit, sit and rigs is what we call it out here. Okay. And that means, uh, well, as a geologist, you work in the office, and you've got all the maps and, and that sort of stuff, and, and uh, returns, uh, drilling returns from other wells. And if you're smart enough, you'll f put the thoughts together along with what the un underground is. And uh, if you work up uh, a deal and uh, the boss is above you, or if you've got lots of money, you'll go and drill a well yourself. And uh, so that's that's what the game was. I never had the money to drill myself, yeah. to tell you the truth. But uh, we went out, I went out, uh, whenever there was a well to sit, I'd go and... Uh, sit on it. It would be all over Saskatchewan and I think I got sent up into Alberta a couple of times. And uh, so I've got this sequence not quite right because it was when I went back to school again, uh, I got the, went down to uh, Nova Scotia. Nova Scotia. And uh, Got through a year of, of a lot of fun because Archie was there, the guy that I said Your we buddy. rubbed tires for. Yeah, so we went down there and uh, as a family, and we had a little boy uh, at that time, and it was a great, uh, a great time. You you guys from there are terrific. You know, you really are <laughs> good folk, good folk in a yeah. different way than out here, and. Uh, it was it was a great experience for us, and we traveled up the islands and so on, and had a great time. Went to PEI and yeah, yeah. So we d we did that and came back and uh, I, I'm trying to dig out a story from down there. There was lots of them, but <laughs> any, anyway, uh, we had a good time and. Uh, yeah, I'll, I'll put this out. Uh, we went. I went to the uh, Saint FX, and that wasn't our religious uh, connection, but it was pur purposely done to find out about that, and that that was as much the education as the actual teaching. And we had some real interesting teachers that uh, were quite surprising. They, they were good, solid people, you know. And uh, so anyway, we enjoyed that. I'm getting to run on here. 
but uh, so we came back to Edmonton, and I went high, teaching in the high school. So that's the backwards and, part. And, and what did you teach uh, mainly in the high school? Well, science, yeah, physics and ma For math grade. and so stuff. And eight? Which grades? Or did you teach uh, grade nine to twelve? Uh, yeah, not nine, ten to twelve. It was okay. yeah in that's a nice. in a major high uh, high school in town here. Are there ever specific classes for geology in uh, no. high school? No, I no, mean, no. Ours no. didn't, but it was a No, it was the fact that I knew how to act, add two and two and yeah. get four. That's about what it was. But I enjoyed the kids. I had a hell of a good time with the kids. They were not, not little kids. They were yeah. students yeah. is what they were. And I uh, had a good time with them. And... Uh, the kids, our kids were growing up, and Ollie was happy, and what more can you ask, you know? And so, uh, the school then, I guess, it, it's, I don't know, maybe I just was at a time in life when I wanted to do a bunch of things, and I've, you know, I still do. That's one of the big problems I have, you it's, know? It's a good thing, too, though. Yeah, it is. Is that ambition? Yeah, sure. And so uh, anyway, I went went back for the master's degree in the geology department, and um, that was good. I I had some great. Uh, I had a great guy. I can't even remember his name now, but he was an American from the U.S. who was teaching up here, and uh, and and the the I guess the the best thing to come out of that educational wise and knowledge-wise, was two professors that had been there for years. And uh, both essentially, I'd say, started the geology department. And they were the guys that essent essentially discovered oil in Alberta. That's a stretch, but nevertheless, they knew all the underground yeah. connections of the formations and all this stuff uh, from a, 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 that viewpoint, not making money with it, but yeah, yeah. telling the boys where to Knowing go where and on, a, on an industrial basis. And uh, Dr. Warren was one and Dr. Spelt was another. And uh, with those guys, my God, the thoughts and the and the methods that they used to put that stuff in your head was incredible. They were really, really good teachers. The first first uh, uh, class I had in geology. So you, you know what you you know what you're like, you know. So I went in and sat down, of course, in the back row. You know, one of those jerks. <laughs> That's what I was. <laughs> Nevertheless, uh, sitting in the back with another guy that was the same make that I was. And uh, this fellow walks in, and he's got a black coat on sort of thing, you know. That's the wrong name, but there's a name for the thing. And uh, he's uh, pacing up in front of the blackboard, back and forth, back and forth. So much so that the class just went dead silence, you know. And you knew right away he was playing the game with you, you know. But he, uh, this was Dr. Warren, and uh, he was a terrific teacher. And the first words out of his mouth, he looked at everybody's eyes, and then he said, I want you all to learn to swim at this class and everybody looked and there was silence and then he looked back and he said we had two geologists paddling a canoe that drowned and we don't ever want that to happen again wow. you know god it just everybody was just mm -hmm. dead on his eyes and for a year that uh, a year they never took them off it's a good way to shock and open, oh, uh, open man. up the class. And they were so knowledgeable, it was unbelievable. So that was a, just like a gift from, gift from heaven. Yeah. So that was after you had taught in high school. Yeah. You went back for yeah, a master's. Yeah, master's. And uh, you had also done some work uh, in Yukon. 
Is that correct? Yeah. 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 Was that earlier or later? Uh, that was that was right after getting out of that. Uh, just a minute. I, you're getting me to think back. <laughs> God, my head is spinning like crazy. I think I went up there in between. Okay. Yeah, I did. It was back when I got the first degree and so on. Okay. And the guy. So, and you've also j jiggled my head a little bit just to tell you that I went up there and worked for five months and came back and the company had broken up and I didn't get paid for the five months. For, the, for nothing? <laughs> No, it no, no, I went broke. Was it for gold or? Yeah, it was for anything you could find. Okay. And so we were climbing mountains. There was no, we had a truck. No, we had, yeah, a truck uh, to go back and forth where people were. But when we started to go into the area to looking for things, it was walk. There was no helicopters. There was no way of transporting. So it was. Uh, Stay in good shape. Eh? Stayed in good shape. Oh God, yeah, was I? Yeah, tougher than nails. And well, I can tell you that if you think about the the war and what was going on back here in in Edmonton, oh, was and it, I, it was around that. No, time. not no, no, it wasn't around that time. Getting this thing, yeah, I was fat. You know, <laughs> I was a fat kid, and I couldn't run worth a damn. So all we'd go down to the Parliament Building to the Legion and to play football, and they'd kill me. <laughs> All my friends would kill me, you know. Because you were too slow. Yeah, oh yeah, I couldn't run. I couldn't catch them, you know. But when I came back from the Yukon five months, I could run up their back end and down the front and lay them out and do whatever I had. And I really took advantage of that, I can tell you. I haven't hit anybody since, I don't think. But there you go. It was incredible, yeah. Right so anyway, that's, we're getting off topic maybe, but. So, so you would say, um, mentor-wise, you had talked about uh, the yeah, two, your first teacher in, in school and your two yeah. teachers during your master's yeah. would be your mentors. And I don't know whether it was dumb luck or not, but God, they were good to me. And and in you know, I've never had I've never had anybody teach me that was bad, really bad. These guys were just so much. The last two that I mentioned, mm -hmm. and the and the first one, yeah, it was good. And so, uh, did you ever work in um, a job that was dysfunctional or just unorganized or a mess? <laughs> uh, I don't think so, because uh, I didn't let it happen. Do you know what I'm trying to say? Yeah. Like if the guys. Or giving you a bad time, you say, George, back off. You know, they back off usually. I've never had any troubles, and I've, I've always been one that would jump in and help the guy. You know, if he was down under something, he'd go down under there and help him fix it. So no, I've I've never had any of that, that trouble. Uh, what about the five months in Yukon where you didn't get paid? Well, the, the coming back and uh, and <laughs> we're driving down here and finding out that there was kind of no pay. I guess what you do is you go to daddy, don't you? <laughs> you know, <laughs> and you say, "What can I do?" And he said, "Well, you can find another job. <laughs> Tell me, go and get one." You know, <laughs> and so guess what? I tried to make up the, enough money to do what I wanted to do. And, uh, I bought a, I'm not quite sure of all the years now talking to you, but uh, I bought my first car, I guess, which was a 1977 Chevy Coupe. How old were you then? I don't know, old enough to get girls in the front seat. <laughs> now, I phrased that wrong. But nothing in those days. You didn't get girls. You <laughs> accompanied them. Yeah, yeah. You drove them places. <laughs> you drove them places. Yeah. yeah. And if you stopped, that was. You know what I Big know what I'm trying to say. Got it. Yeah. Okay. You got it. <laughs> so anyway, that's what I had, and that was the fun. And I took care of that thing. I had it for a long time. 
fun and games. And out of, uh, I mean, you've had so many different jobs in so many different. Oh, uh, you. Uh, we're not finished yet. Yeah, yeah, no, <laughs> not at all. But what would you say is uh, one or some of the biggest challenges that you had to overcome throughout your career, or in a specific job, or what? Or in a specific job. Well, I I guess the. Um, I I don't want to use the word toughest job because it wasn't a it, I wasn't getting bent out of shape or anything. But I for fifteen years I spent uh, managing uh, another fellow's business, uh, and it was a geotechnical uh, drilling company, and uh, I that was very fortunate to to have the job to get the job. And looking back. But I worked my butt off because I was taking calls from uh, from our our crews uh, were with the drills, and uh, we were doing a lot of drilling in the high Arctic and over in in Northwest Territories in Canada, and uh, in the winter. There's and tough, uh, tough those job. guys, those guys were sent up their crews. We had I don't know how many guys working then, but probably thirty, maybe something like that. Not all there, but some in the local stuff here where they were building buildings and stuff. And uh, so we had these guys up up high up north, and uh, I didn't feel sorry for them, but I knew that they were really, really working tough. And uh, in the cold, and uh, so uh, that was a little tough to do. And uh, the gentleman that I was working for, I, I'm not certain that he paid a hundred percent of interest in what was going on. And guess whose shoulder it fell to? You picked up the slack. Well, I guess I did because uh, he had a couple airplanes and stuff, and I was walking. And <laughs> <laughs> but I had a, the the guys that I was working with and looking after. To tell you the truth, it was rewarding in its own way. I got into the Arctic quite a few times and stuff, so that was good. Yeah. And what would you say is? Um you had to pick one, what's your fondest memory from your professional career? Tough question. Now that is a tough question. No kidding. The fondest, that's a good word too. The fondest thing. I guess I, I can't do that, but I, what I can say is that uh, if you want to use that word, I've had uh, the fondest life that anybody could ever want. I, I'm telling you, I, my wife is the greatest thing in the world. And some of the places that I got, uh, one being, well, I said I was up in the Arctic. And Antarctica. And Antarctica. That's and uh, I was the, the people that I met uh would say I can I can remember the night just like I was down in in an area south south and east of Banff doing geology work I wasn't doing when for the research council of Alberta I was working for them uh, with uh, two other guys three other guys I guess one of which was Tom Tom here that's pictured just above you. Mm. And uh, I was laying on the bunk top near the roof. It was a little little building. And uh, I was sleeping up on this thing. And uh, the two other, oh, two other guys were over playing cards. And uh, <laughs> one of them shouts, Curry! I said, yeah. He says, do you want to go to the Antarctic? Damn right, when's the plane leave? Just like that you know so I go home and I tell my dear wife and this is why she's dear I said I got a chance to go to the ice to the ice 
that's what we ended up calling it, and that's what everybody calls it down there. Logically, is the I, yeah. And uh, I said, <laughs> and uh, she said, if if you want to go, and I said, yeah. She said, sure. And she had two kids at the time, or we had two kids <laughs> at the time, and. Um, so I would go down there, and it was it's unbelievable at that time, uh, but there was a problem, and uh, we got up in a helicopter that we were going to go back and forth in the area. You don't drive a car down there, <laughs> not at that year anyway. But uh, anyway, it fell out of the sky and burned and. Uh, Two of the eight of us, so six were got out, and uh, two were dead. And my friend who took me down there was beside me, and he he was killed. And uh, uh, that's certainly the most somber time. And I still, I went, um, I went until probably three years ago, so like a long time, before I could uh, talk about it, you know, it was tough. So that was probably the, it, and it wasn't a down thing, it, well it was, I mean don't ever kid yourself, it was a down thing, but it wasn't, the guy can use those things to, in his lifetime to get along, you know. Mm -hmm. And so um, that was a tough one. <laughs> Fooey on that one. But, yeah. Yeah. Sorry for a change of pace, but thank you. Um, did you join any professional organizations or committees or throughout your career? Uh, I wasn't one for that movement in life. Uh, I didn't uh, I didn't I don't know quite how to phrase this. Anyway, there was there was um, the professional ones. Uh, I did at at time um, uh, join. I don't know whether you join, but you go to the dinners and you go to so you, I was selective if they were putting on a good program, I'd go to it and pay the extra money. But the membership, is, membership has never been a thing for me. And uh, e even in a, 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 we're having a, a, what do you call it? Next week we're going to vote or something. And I've never been one to get into that at all. So. I just sort of wander around when it comes to that. I don't go to those things. I just, but I did join the uh, engineering. Yeah, I had to do that and the geological uh, things. And I ended up um, in both cases, I guess, being offering time as secretary or whatever. And uh, I'd go to those meetings and. Uh, do what we're doing here. Yeah. Telling stories. <laughs> Good times. Yeah. Uh, were there any, I guess, go to uh, social activities that, that you and your coworkers uh, and the witch would do? Uh, you and your coworkers, were there any activities, uh, social activities that you guys would always, always go to, always do? Uh, Is sport so, allowed? Absolutely. Well, I, I played uh, uh, one hell of a lot of handball. Oh, yeah? Yeah, a lot. And uh, the guys from there, it, it, I don't know whether you'd call it a social, it, it wasn't a social thing, but, uh, but maybe once, once every two or three years they'd have a golf tournament or something, and I wasn't a golfer, so but I'd go for the dinners, don't ever kid yourself. But nevertheless, that that went on, and, and there's still guys that I see even at my, my age and their ages who will meet and have a cup of coffee and tell stories and things and swear a lot, and, you know, that stuff. All about the stories then. Yeah, yeah. 
And so I really enjoyed that uh, that aspect of it, and uh, lots of lots of fun and uh, going. You know what, guys, when you get guys together, but we had a great time. And the game game was a great game. I uh, I don't know even how I got started in it, but we were at the YMCA downtown here in in Edmonton. And I played a couple of times uh, other other cities, uh, Minnesota. I played uh, a couple of times, I guess, down in there. And, and people will play you. It's a nice thing. So it's social, all right, but it isn't. Do you know what I'm saying? Yeah. yeah. It's not overly competitive. Oh, hell with yeah. that. <laughs> you don't know. It's very competitive. But it's yeah. all in good fun in, at the end. At the end. At it's the all end. in good fun. Yeah. <laughs> Once the game's done. Yeah. 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 And um, throughout your career, I mean, this might be uh, an answer that varies because you've had so many different... Yeah. Um, Jobs. ...taken so many different paths in your, in, your, uh, yeah. in your life, but were there any trending social um, issues or problems in, in jobs, whether it was... Um, alcoholism or drug use or you mean for me uh for in general so not necessarily just for you or or for you but for well i'll tell you my my the guys around you were no hell no none of that but i can tell you my history with alcohol <laughs> sure uh when i was seven or eight my cousins came and they to town in edmonton no yeah i guess it was here and uh, they were gone their way through to Jasper. So they said, okay, we'll take him. You know, we'll take this little guy. So I go with them. So they end up, of all places, on a sand piece in the middle of the river up there with cases of beer. And they would be maybe 15 to 18 and they more or less made me like if I wanted to get back across the water and we had to walk that they they uh, made me drink half a beer and that's the only yeah I, I could make this statement and there might be one or two other times than when I grew up but that's the only alcohol that's ever crossed Really? Yeah, I've just said not a not a big drinker. I'm not a drinker, period. Yeah, at all. Yeah, except like when you were seven. there's <laughs> seventy years of, <laughs> of nothing. But that's that's what did it. I just I just, that ruined it for you. Oh yeah. Well yeah, and it was so so memorable that I just said, the hell with that. I don't want that. So if if you have a child, you can send him out here, and I'll take him to a set in the middle of the river. And the river was going like hell. Like I mean, it wasn't you know. And so anyway, that's me, and I haven't uh, had any problems with that side of it all. My my father did drink, but uh, and and did get drunk the odd time, but he wasn't he wasn't bad, all that bad. Yeah. Yeah. There you go. And, um, I mean, teaching uh, women are much more present, but uh, in the other aspects of your life, uh, how present or absent were women? That's an odd question that you asked. Yeah. About, about uh, well, women, women in the work Women. Oh, women and, in the and, and what that reflected to me, and I didn't say anything, was 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 that directed to the troubles that guys are having living in the current life with a total difference of the women's attitude towards men. Oh, for sure times are changing, but it's also, um, I, I think it's a question more being asked because so many of the jobs uh, in mining, metallurgy, petroleum, yeah. uh, those natural resource jobs um, are more... There's a lot more men present than women. Yeah. Usually. So that's yeah. more the, the question. Yeah. I th I think that uh, well, this is an old-fashioned thing, I guess, 
but if you're looking at from a, for that aspect, uh, I don't know. And this is from my past, I guess. I would not like to see women being on a drilling rig. The women are starting to get into the wrestling ring and the boxing ring. Yeah. And uh, I mean, if that's the way society's going, I guess there will be women out there running the rig. And I don't have any trouble with that, yeah. not at all. You just wouldn't see it before because you thought it would maybe be uh, too dangerous for them? or Well, yeah. I mean, uh, uh, to to look at the the mus muscular uh, or anatomy, build mm -hmm. today, or the anatomy, but the the muscular make of the women now, they they'll go and and build it, you know. Well, that's fine. Go and work on the rig, whatever you want. But in those days, those jobs weren't available, and they didn't want them. I can tell you that they wanted to be the stenographer in the. There's a word that's not used anymore. Yeah. <laughs> stenographer in the thing, and and uh, and they did that really well, and they were the ones essentially that were running the business. Well, the guy went golfing. You know? <laughs> I don't golf either. <laughs> you know, yeah, I'm. I'm I'm not a big fan of golf. I either. I used to play golf, and I went when I got moved down to Saskatchewan, and uh, <laughs> I took uh, took the clubs that I had, and uh, went to Weyburn's uh, golf course, and they didn't know what water was. On the they never watered the the, the, the grass, and the grass was over oh, concrete yeah, tough stuff, <laughs> and it just destroyed my clubs, and I put them away, and that was the end of it. Yeah, no, I, anyway. I could never get into golf. No, I didn't. It wasn't mine either. Um, so you're running out of gas on it. No, I don't know. And a few, a few more questions. All right. more questions. Yeah, so I don't care. No, hell no. <laughs> I sit here all day. The sun goes down. Uh, so um, we had talked about, or I think you had maybe mentioned it, or if not, we'll get into it now, but um, that you were managing director of Alberta Chamber of Resources for a yeah, while. Yeah, 15 years. Yeah. So there you go. So yeah. what changes did you bring as a uh, as managing director? What changes? Yeah, or what what were the what were your big achievements or were you proud of during that period in that role? Huh. I guess that This is going to be Papa Witch phoned here, phoned you guys, mm -hmm. and said, you know, I can't think of anybody else. Will you do it? And I said, what the hell? You knew I'd do it before you phoned, you know. <laughs> and so... I don't know whether I, I really don't like talking about myself, <laughs> even though you and I have had a great time, but uh, you were asking about life and stuff like that, and stuff I had fun in and stuff like this. But the Chamber of Resources was, that was probably the best job that I've, I, I couldn't, no, I scrubbed that, I don't. It was not the best one because all of them are the same. They're all good. They're all good. Yeah, it's all been good. But the the chamber stuff was really successful uh, for me. I didn't I didn't get money and I didn't get whatever. But I rewarding. Re, yeah, the reward was the people that were there. And there was one guy that was a, a Turkish fellow who had come to New York, gone to university there, and ended up in Calgary with an oil company. And uh, I'm having trouble with my head right now. I'm trying to get his name. That's okay. 
I'll get it. It's real important that I get it. Because he was the one that everybody that has made a buck with the oil sands should thank him. And he was, he was absolutely unique character in that uh, he would, he could attract people to meetings to talk about stuff that was had to be people's heads that could make decisions on very difficult things that this title that you have told told me you wanted to talk about and we've been talking about everything else <laughs> but Dr. Ertl Yildirim there's the guy there you go and he he could put out an, an email in the end but probably phone or letter or whatever and send it to South Africa send it to New York send it to anywhere and say we're having this meeting and uh, you'd say, you know, where do they have it? Well, he'd phoned the Alberta government, and he'd had uh, <laughs> the premier, I guess, say it's all right to use the big building that they've got down there with little seat, I don't know, 50 or 60 guys in a circle. And so he could do stuff like that. And these guys would come from all over the place because of him. Yeah, that influence. Not well. They knew him. Do you know what I'm trying to yeah. say? Yeah. It wasn't. It wasn't sort of like. It was probably in, at their end, like, God, he's still doing it. I want to go and see him, and they'd go, and he would gather these people, all that had deep knowledge about whatever the hell it was. It could have been the most. Uh, what would you say, deep thinking re required to make it go and to apply that to the right thing in the oil sands. And uh, So they kind of form a, a big think tank almost. It wasn't called that. Uh, it was, it was uh, the Alberta Chamber of Resources. Oh, yeah. Okay. Um, now, so... And talked a bit about uh, managing director at the uh, Chamber yeah. of Resources, but you were also managing director of Construction Owners Association. Yeah, Alberta. yeah. There's a there's some stories there. I don't know how long you want this, but we'll, we're here. We're having we're fun. We're having well. fun, I guess. Might right? as well. Okay, uh, Construction Owners Association of Alberta was a uh, an outfit that was established in Edmonton to have the contractors talk talk to one another about how they're going to do things and all that kind of stuff. Uh, but it was very well developed in the United States of America. And uh, somebody, not the chamber, uh, but somebody in years before, number of years before, they came to the ACR uh, they were in the city and in the province. Yeah, that's right. Uh, I'm not sure they really were in Calgary. I think maybe it was just around in the Edmonton area. And so they were people that would come together and talk about construction and, uh, and had great, and it would be the, uh, the president's, yeah, the presidents, maybe the vice presidents of the companies that would go to them. And so uh, they ran out of money. Their association ran out of money. And so uh, uh, they were looking for a place that was cheaper and that would take them in. And so we took them in at the ACR. And... Uh, so they didn't, uh, they didn't have anybody to be their, I don't know, sweep the floor guy, and so they hired me. 
I guess. They didn't hire me. They said, well, yeah, we'll come to you. And I ended up being both of them, the ACR and the, and the COAA. Okay. And uh, so we, it, it was the right time. It was uh, when things were at the bottom and they were coming up f as far as construction of big things and the oil sands. And so they, uh, they, they were run, well, I guess they were run by me, but uh, th that part of it was run by me, but the, the rest of it was just as if it was another association. And it was a, a great bunch of guys, and uh, they grew, and uh, it was, it was kind of neat for me because it's, it was associated, we got it associated with the COAA in the United States, and it used to be, I don't think with this government in the United States at the moment that anybody tells them how to do a damn thing. But uh, the COAA in, in uh, Calgary back then uh, could go to the president of the U.S. and say, come on, let's go and have lunch, come and have lunch with us, and we want to tell you how the hell to run the country. <laughs> just not the way it was. Yeah. That's overstretched, you know that. But <laughs> nevertheless, they had a lot of pull. And uh, I, I used to go down to a couple of the meetings, and of course what they all were was golfing stuff, and I'd stand and watch. But they, were, they knew what the hell they were doing, and so I brought back the methodology and put it in to these guys up here because they didn't normally go down there. And, and so they were, now that Larry's running it now, we haven't met Larry yet, I guess, eh? No. Larry's, he's, uh, he's not running it now, I shouldn't put it that way. It's the Alberta Chamber of Resources who are still looking after the COAA. But they've, the two of these guys, have you met either of them? Have you met? Larry and? And, uh. God, I, I taught the guy at the U of A. He's a geologist. No, then I don't Come think on. so. Come on, Don. I'll get it. God, I've known him for a long time. But nevertheless, he runs the chamber, and the chamber is still the biggest one. I mean, the other one is smaller, but it's growing and getting more. The COAA is growing a little bit and doing a little better. And is the COAA just for construction you were talking like? up north uh, for, for the development of, of rigs and stuff, but is it also for, um, is it just for natural resource development? No, it, it's, no. It's well, well wait a minute, I, I don't know if you want a little bit of history. It used to have to do with building apartment blocks and okay. stuff yeah. before, but that's kind of run out and it is industrial. No, I more think it's more. all industrial. Okay. It gets all industrial. And so when, it fit. And when you were there, it was mostly for industrial. We made it that way. Okay. We were the ones that made it that way. Took the heavy, it from the smaller to the heavy. We did a lot of good work there too. God, those guys, they were different from the description I gave of the other. They were different, but they, they knew what the hell they wanted, you know. And they always had the union guys. Uh, you know, we had the female um, <laughs> the female uh, woman from the provincial government. We invited her to Red Deer, <laughs> oh God, to a room full of unionized workers. There must have been 150 of them in there. And... Uh, I still know her, and I still get invited to stuff. But she uh, she came in the door late, and it did all kind of started. And so when it came time for her to talk, she got up, and she looked out at this group of tough-looking guys, and uh, she said, where the hell are the the cigarettes and she made something else too maybe she said she didn't say beer I don't think but she was a tough broad I'm telling you so you talk about the girl stuff yeah. you know she walked in a hundred of them at least 
And she shocked all the men. Uh, Tomberg and the Antarctic is probably the most important thing in my life outside of family and all of that. That's had more effect on me than anything. And uh, I was, there was interesting stuff we did down there. And I never talked about it outside. And I got asked to give a talk, not on that, but, you know. And so I put together one. And uh, I talked about it to a group of guys. And uh, I got it out of my system. You know, it was a heavy, that's, I don't want this people to feel sorry for it. It wasn't that. But it was a heavy something in here to carry that all those years. And, uh, but it's gone. It didn't hurt me. I couldn't, I could still laugh and joke and act stupid. That, you know, that's easy for me. <laughs> but that, that really, really bothered me. So much so that the place I gave it at, it was, uh, there was about 30 guys there, I guess. I said, well, I'm not going to give this talk ever again. So I didn't. I haven't. So, and I won't. So it, everlasting, you know, to be there, right here. Yeah, for sure. And like that. Yeah. So it must be the same in an automobile, maybe, or something, you know. Yeah. Yeah. Anyway, so there you go. There's the peace sign. I just thinking about Tony. Quite a story. Yeah, it wasn't easy talking to you about it either. You know? Well, thank you. Anyway. Yeah. Thanks for sharing. Um, so we'll pick up with um, what are you proudest of in life? Did you ask me that before? When the camera wasn't working. Well, no, when the mic oh, wasn't yeah, working. Okay. So what are you proudest of in life? Well, I, I guess I'm as proudest things would be my wife and my and our, our well and our children and our grandchildren and so on. that's probably the thing you'd be proud of although sometimes you know you get a little upset that you're not that proud because they're doing what you at my age you look back and you say you're not supposed to do that you know but nevertheless sure that's yeah and I guess I can still laugh and I can still smile and I can still have a time. Have a good time. Good. So Don, what are you proudest of or what, what is your biggest accomplishment in the world of geology or or petroleum? Uh, to have been given some ability to have other people success, other people succeed so that they do, which is, I guess, the teacher thing, all right? Yeah. Nice answer. Is that all right? Yeah. Okay. Sure. You got okay. it. That's yeah. a nice answer. Uh, okay, now as a, as a father, as a teacher, um, I, I like this question. Um, if you could give, uh, give, could give anyone or them or your kids or your students any sort of life lesson, what would be that life lesson? What would you tell them? For life? For life, for their future careers, for... What would be the life lesson you gave a younger a younger person? Or even a piece of advice, sir? Mm -hmm. Or even just a piece of advice? Um, I guess I'd, uh, I'd ask them to be fair and not be 
only interest in their self and treat other people with kindness and re I don't know how you could say it just remember to laugh and smile because that's really what really matters is if you can see the humor in things or create it for other people yeah. Yeah. Is that all right? Absolutely. Now, is there anything you would like to add before we end? Yeah, I'd like to add that this is the end. <laughs> <laughs> excellent, excellent. Well, thanks a lot for uh, for this interview. Good. Thank you very much. Good. <laughs>